time. Greetings to the deceased. But first, we ask that you show your love and affection by giving a positive sign in this video and by subscribing to the channel so you don't miss the next tributes. Unfortunately, a sad death has just been confirmed in the media. Turns out that Sridath Ramphal, former Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Guyana, passed away this Saturday afternoon, August 31st, at the age of 95. Specific cause of his death has not been widely reported. Confirmation of his death was reported by Guyanese news sources such as Stabrook News. Further details regarding the confirmation are still emerging. He began his career as a lawyer in London in 1951 and was appointed Deputy Attorney General of the West Indies Federation in 1958, where he served until 1962. During his tenure, he was an active voice against apartheid in South Africa and championed causes such as global development, international peace, and multilateralism. In addition, he was a member of the International Earth Charter Commission and served as chancellor of several universities including the University of Warwick and the University of the West Indies. Even in his later years, he remained involved in international causes, such as during the COVID-19 pandemic, when he represented Guyana in a border dispute with Venezuela, the International Court of Justice. He was widely respected for his work and significant contributions to the global stage. May you rest in peace, Sir Sridath Ramphal. Your life was a beacon of justice and peace guiding nations and inspiring leaders. May your legacy continue to light the way to a more just world. Humanity is eternally grateful for your steadfast service. May your soul find eternal tranquility. The iconic American actress Gail Hunnica, 80 years old, passed away on August 31st. She is well known on television for playing Vanessa Beaumont, the mother of J.R. Ewing's illegitimate son in the series Dallas. According to information from the family, she died in a London hospital. The veteran began her career in 1966 when she appeared in the biker film The Wild Angels alongside Peter Fonda and in an episode of the series Mr. Robert. She also appeared in The Big Bang Theory and Get Smart for establishing herself in cinema with the thriller A New Face in Hell by John Gillerman, paired with George Peppard, and especially in the classic neo-noir Detective Marlowe in action, with James Garner and Bruce Lee, she began her horror filmography with The Cats. But her definitive dive into the genre occurred after she moved to England. After her divorce from Hemmings in 1975, the actress married journalist Simon Jenkins in 1978, who was knighted in 2004 for his services to journalism. After a period without major roles, she was part of the cast of three seasons of the series Dallas, between 1989 and 1991, giving the character Vanessa Beaumont great relevance in the plot. After that, the actress also appeared in an episode of Tales from the Crypt in 1996, before retiring from the screens. She remained married to Simon Jenkins until 2009. Her presence and talent lit up our screens and hearts. Her performance will always be remembered with admiration and affection. Although we will miss her, her art and legacy will live on in our memories. We thank her for all the brightness she brought to our lives. Another death has been reported in America. The famous professional ice hockey player, Johnny Gaudreau, 31, and his brother Matthew, 29, sadly passed away yesterday after being hit by a car. They were riding their bikes when they were hit by a drunk driver in New Jersey, United States. On social media, Johnny's team, the Blue Jackets, mourned the death of the American star. Columbus Blue Jackets are shocked and devastated by this unimaginable tragedy. Johnny was not only a great hockey player, but more significantly, a loving husband, father, son, brother, and friend. We extend our deepest condolences to his wife, Meredith, his children, Noah and Johnny, his parents, family, and friends on the sudden loss of Johnny and Matthew. The two were set to be best men at their sister's wedding this weekend and have passed away. Johnny and Matthew were preparing for their sister Katie's wedding, which was scheduled to take place this Saturday in Philadelphia. They were both set to be best men. Godreau made his NHL debut with the Calgary Flames in 2014. During his time with the Flames, he established himself as one of the league's top forwards. Known for his speed, 
puck handling skills, and ability to create offensive plays. He was selected to multiple NHL All-Star games and received awards and recognition for his performance. Throughout his career, Gaudreau has been known for his ability to make impressive plays and be a major contributor on offense. He has also represented Canada in international competition, including the World Hockey Championship. The hockey star leaves behind his wife, Meredith, and two young children, Noah and Johnny. May he rest in peace. One of the main topics of the week was the death of Leonard Riggio, the big-name American businessman behind the Barnes & Noble bookstore chain in the U.S., According to a statement sent by his family, Riggio died on Thursday after a valiant battle with Alzheimer's disease. He had stepped down as chairman in 2019 after the chain was sold to hedge fund Elliott Advisors. According to CNN Brazil, Riggio reigned for almost half a century. It began in 1971 when he used a $1.2 million loan to buy the Barnes & Noble name and flagship store on Lower Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. In the 1990s, he acquired hundreds of spaces and created an empire of superstores, which aimed to create a welcoming environment for readers, with cafes and sofas in the establishment. A great businessman, Riggio began his career in the bookstore industry with a small store in Manhattan. He opened the first Barnes & Noble in 1965, initially a bookstore selling academic books. Riggio also pioneered several innovations in book retailing, including the introduction of in-store coffee shops, which became a standard in the industry. In addition to his career with Barnes & Noble, Riggio has been active in several philanthropic initiatives and has invested in other sector. Leonard Riggio, your contribution to the world of bookstores has been truly transformative. With your vision and leadership, you have not only grown Barnes & Noble, but also redefined the book buying and reading experience. May the next chapter of your life be filled with new opportunities and joy. Your legacy will continue to inspire and influence many. Jazz guitarist Russell Malone, 60, died earlier this week. The news was announced by bassist Ron Carter, whose trio Malone played with for years. The musician died in Tokyo after a heart attack. Malone was in Tokyo with Carter and pianist Donald Vega. The trio was on tour in Japan and had just performed at the local Blue Note when the musician fell ill. Carter said the tour will continue with him and Vega playing as a duo, with Malone's chair empty on stage out of respect for the musician. He began playing at age four, after his mother gave him a green plastic four-string guitar. Malone gravitated toward blues and gospel even playing in his Baptist church band. He fell in love with jazz at age 12, after seeing George Benson play with Benny Goodman on television. Malone was highly regarded for his versatility. He could accompany a variety of singers and instrumentalists in a variety of styles, but he also had his own distinct sound as a band leader and soloist. Malone emerged on the jazz scene in the late 1980s with organist Jimmy Smith. He joined Connick in 1990 and played with him on tour and on such notable albums as We Are In Love and Blue Light Red Light. He also played with singer and pianist Diana Krall from 1995 to 1999. I am deeply sorry for your loss, Russell Malone. The contribution of your music to jazz is immeasurable, and your talent will continue to resonate through the ages. My thoughts are with you and your family at this time of mourning. Another death has been reported to the sadness of the American public. The family of Benji Radak, a former American UFC fighter, confirmed his death last Monday at the age of 45. The cause of death of the experienced athlete was not revealed. However, as reported, he had been suffering from health problems for a long time. Radak arrived at the UFC undefeated and stood out for having a large number of fights in a short period of time. It was only in 2001 when he made his professional debut in MMA, that he had seven fights, winning all of them and most of them by knockout. Benji retired from MMA in 2015. The American worked for major organizations in the sport, such as UFC, Bellator, and Strikeforce. Benji Raddock's last victory came only in 2008 against Marilo Ninja from Curitiba in the Elite XC dispute. Radak has announced his retirement from professional MMA after several years of fighting and facing health challenges. 
He stepped away from active competition and has since focused on other activities outside of the octagon. After retiring, Radak has been involved in MMA-related activities, including working as a coach and commentator. He may also be involved in charity events and other initiatives outside of the sport. Benji Radak, your courage and determination in the octagon have been truly inspiring. Throughout your career, you have not only demonstrated exceptional skill, but also an indomitable spirit that has earned the respect and admiration of many. As you leave the sport, know that your legacy and accomplishments will continue to inspire future fighters. We wish you success and happiness in the next stages of your life. Another death has been reported to the sadness of the American public. The family of Benji Radak, a former American UFC fighter, confirmed his death last Monday at the age of 45. The cause of death of the experienced athlete was not revealed. However, as reported, he had been suffering from health problems for a long time. Radak arrived at the UFC undefeated and stood out for having a large number of fights in a short period of time. It was only in 2001, when he made his professional debut in MMA, that he had seven fights, winning all of them and most of them by knockout. Benji retired from MMA in 2015. The American worked for major organizations in the sport, such as UFC, Bellator, and Strikeforce. Benji Radak's last victory came only in 2008, against Marilo Ninja from Curitiba, in the Elite XC dispute. Radak has announced his retirement from professional MMA after several years of fighting and facing health challenges. He stepped away from active competition and has since focused on other activities outside of the octagon. After retiring, Radak has been involved in MMA-related activities, including working as a coach and commentator. He may also be involved in charity events and other initiatives outside of the sport. Benji Radak, your courage and determination in the octagon have been truly inspiring. Throughout your career, you have not only demonstrated exceptional skill, but also an indomitable spirit that has earned the respect and admiration of many. As you leave the sport, know that your legacy and accomplishments will continue to inspire future fighters. We wish you success and happiness in the next stages of your life.